G'day SA. I'm Jenna. And I'm Jay. And, and welcome, welcome to, to Adelaide. Adelaide. What an exciting time of the year, Jen. Absolutely. You can bet we'll be seeing tourists from all around Australia and the globe. Well, we're not called the festival state for nothing. The Adelaide Fringe Festival is the largest of its kind in the Southern Hemisphere taking place in over 300 venues in Adelaide CBD and suburbs, as well as extending to the regional centre of Port Augusta for Desert Fringe, it really is a time to show off South Australia's festival spirit and charm. Tell you what, I'm so excited. The Adelaide Fringe Festival, running until March the 17th, started in 1960 here in Adelaide by annual event and then in 2006 I got so excited because it went annually. I absolutely love the acts here at the Fringe Festival from around the globe and from artists from around Australia. The atmosphere is absolutely fantastic. The Fringe attracts over 400 artists from across the globe to South Australia to showcase their work. This year, with bigger venues and more talent, it's better than ever. It's an open access event, so anyone with artistic vision can present their work, which means there's something to suit everyone. One star, one gun star, and bam! Hey world, here I am. Ow, I'm on my bed. Ow, I'll be and Manish and we've come all the way from London to be here for the Adelaide Fringe and it's our first time so we're very excited. We are a comedy cabaret act we would call ourselves um, so we've been doing all the fringes we, we did Edinburgh Fringe we've done uh, Sydney Mardi Gras we did Melbourne Comedy Festival we've done Adelaide Cabaret Festival so we have actually been to Adelaide. <laughs> little piece that we did about imagining if uh, Danny Minogue got her hands on Gautier yep. and uh, what she would do to somebody that I used to know which is obviously like record of the year biggest song ever and Danny Minogue as far as the Brits are concerned probably your most important cultural export yep. very, you know very. she's big in the UK <laughs> so uh, we decided what if they did that song together and when we actually did that back in the UK, um, one radio DJ reported it as fact <laughs> and actually went around as Just an internet joke. rumor <laughs> that Danny Minogue originally wrote somebody that used to know, but she did not. She did not. That was us. I'm or sorry. Or did she? I'm or sorry. did she? Listen, let's start you there. Have a smile, a lovely smile. Oh, 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 Loosen everything up or I'm going to say, loosen it up! But I'll admit that I'm still here. 
With over 900 acts performing over four weeks, it can be a bit tricky to pick and choose what to see. If you check out the Adelaide Fringe website How to Fringe page, there's plenty of tips and tricks that should see you on your way. A walk through the Garden of Unearthly Delights is all you need to bump into some performers. I'm here with some fine men from London here for the Fringe Festival. Welcome to beautiful Adelaide. Uh, gorgeous weather today. Now tell us what uh, Fringe act you're in this year. Uh, we're in a show called Angry Young Man, which is on at the Holton Street Theatre. It's a really great, fun piece of uh, stylised theatre, really, really funny. Um, it had been to the Edinburgh Fringe about 2006, won the Holton Street Award, came over here, won Best Play in 2006, I believe. Um, and that was a different cast, we're a brand new cast, I've been together about two and a half weeks. Um, very quick rehearsal process. And it's a dark comic tale of immigration and how one man struggle uh, being arriving in a new country and being accepted. It's your first time in Adelaide. Yes. Now you've had a, a very a quick warm-up session. How was your uh, first night performance? Very good, yeah. Um, we had a couple of previews and then we had the opening night last night and the, the audience seemed to enjoy it, the press seemed to like it, so we can't ask for anything more. Really. Yeah. Do you know what I like? I wake up this morning and I grab the paper because I'm one of these uh, dads that get the paper delivered. <laughs> Have a look and you get a five-star review. Excuse me. Uh, yeah. That doesn't really happen much at the Fringe at all. Uh, how do you feel about that? Oh, fantastic. Over the moon, you know. It's uh, such a great compliment. I mean, you know, when you're doing it in rehearsal, and we obviously haven't been doing it for that long, but you're doing it to one person and it's like, oh, this bit was funny in rehearsal, you're not really sure if it's going to work. and get in front of an audience and they're just lapping it up and loving it and, and to read that in the paper it's really it's really great really flattering the uh, so ad-libbing and all that do you ever stuff up your lines there's got to be some fun bloopers that you've done where you stuffed your lines up and you had to cover each other have you have oh, yeah, come I've across got that a really great one tell us now, a story about that well there's, there's a moment in the play where we refer to a reef which is an alky pop so in, in the uk it's called a reef and you guys don't know what a reef is over here no. so, so they said we should change it to cruiser so I think I'm done, this is on the preview. Yeah. And I, you know, you have a bit of a brain fart, and you think, you know, okay, oh, the bit's coming up, the bit's coming up. Okay, and it's crew. And for some reason, I said charger, and I sort of looked at Paul because Paul's got the same line later on, and he sort of went. <laughs> 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 so anyway, we ended up changing it and got through it in the end. But everyone came up, what's a charger? No one knows what that is, but so I made it up. So did you guys know each other before you uh, did the play yourselves, or did you all audition and then had to form the, uh, you know, that chemistry? Yeah, as they sure, say? sure. We. I mean, me and Paul were at the same drama school, but Paul was a few years ahead of me. Um, but no, we pretty much met, you know, know met properly the, the first day, yeah. day one. Kind of got you know, stuck hit in. it off, and I think it really speaks volumes in the play. It's a really cohesive group, and and I can see the bromance that these guys got. Yeah. Yeah. Big, 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 big guy love everywhere. Now I want you to do a couple of tongue twister warm ups, uh, right. and I'm going to try and say it after you because they're really difficult. What to do to die today, today at 20 to 2? A terribly difficult thing to say, but harder still to do. The dragon will come and bang his drum, a rat a ta 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 to at 20 to 2 to 2 today, today at 20 to 2. Alrighty then. <laughs> I think I'm warmed up just hearing you. Uh, really? I don't think I need to warm up. I think I'm done. Tell me when, how long is the act running until? It's running until the 17th of March. And that's at the Holden Street Theatre, which is absolutely amazing theatre down at Hindmarsh. A very cosy little uh, comfort environment down there, isn't it, the theatre? Yeah, great, great space. space. Yeah, it is a great, great space. space. It really is a great yeah. I want to say thank you for coming down today because you uh, had a pretty late night and you got up early <laughs> for this interview, which we're very, very uh, humble about. So thank you. Enjoy thank your time you in so Adelaide. Much for us. And enjoy the atmosphere while down here because it is simply fantastic. Oh, Thanks really boys. Thank you very much, much for having Appreciate it. Thanks Thanks for having us. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, oh, Jay, there's so much to do here. I am tired, but I'll tell you what, I'm really, really hungry, and I reckon I might get myself some pancakes. Well, I've got a show I want to see, so what do you reckon? Meet back here in an hour? Done deal. Deal.
Okay, I got rid of Jen, so let's go and make some pancakes. I joined up with some friends from Fresh927 for Shrove Tuesday, the official day of pancakes. This is also known as Pancake Day. It signals the beginning of the 40 days of Lent. And for the past 10 years, Uniting Care has used Shrove Tuesday to raise funds for those less fortunate in Adelaide. I'm with Joel, reality TV star, and Jesse, the sales executive. We're here for Fresh 927's team. We've named it Just Bring It. Now, Jesse and myself have uh, been practicing. What's our strategy, Jess? Eat lots and just win. Eat loss and just win. Now, Joel, you've been practicing. What's, your, what's going to be our strategy? Well, here's the thing. A key to a woman's heart is always learning how to toss pancakes. So uh, <laughs> I've been doing that for years, and I think I'm going to do a pretty good job of it today. So we've got the alpha. Why don't you just quickly practice? Just okay. quickly for us. Ready? Okay, so ready? Go. One, two, three. Oh, yeah, we win it. <laughs> Team Fresh, bring it. Original Pancake Kitchen was the first pancake cafe to open in Adelaide 24-7, 365 days of the year. It has all the history of the town and even some unique antiques like the original clock from the Adelaide Railway Station. And Julie, who owns the store, is just a wealth of knowledge. You can really see how much this place really means to her. All right, now, Pancake Kitchen opened in 1965. Uh, I wasn't alive, obviously. You probably <laughs> think I am. But uh, can you tell me a little bit more history f from uh, the journey yes. to where we are today? Well, two gentlemen, Roger Meadmore and Alan Traskell, they were friends. Alan was actually from America. Roger was here from Australia. And Roger actually went over to America and really liked the idea of their diners on the side of the roads. So he came back to Australia and decided, right, I'm going to open up a pancake um, place. Now, it took them 10 years from deciding that they're going to do it to actually doing it. Because at that stage in Australian history, our flour was not refined enough to actually make pancakes. So they had to import um, wow. all their flour from America and they had to import the maple syrup from Canada because it wasn't an actual big import uh, thing at that stage. So it took them 10 years and in 1965 they um, first opened. Now when they first opened, their motto was come in and tell us how you want your pancakes. And so the first few people actually came in and they realised that that was a really bad idea. Uh oh, people were coming up with random yes. flavouring? Yeah. yeah. Um, so then they went back to the, the board again and a gentleman from the advertiser actually came up with their first menu. Now I've got a copy of the first menu downstairs and it's got some beautiful wording, really old fashioned wording, but one of the ones that I really like is it says, please pay in new dollars. Because we were going through the transition of the, the pound yep, to the Australian, Australian dollar. dollar. And then eventually um, the two gentlemen went their separate ways and one of them went to Melbourne and opened up pancake parlours and then the other one went to Sydney and opened up pancakes at the Rocks and so on and so forth. And then this place was actually bought by one of the employees that was there at the time. So um, it hasn't had many um, changes of hands yeah. over the years. And then a few years later my parents actually bought it and I bought it from them. So what made you uh, take this on? Was it the excitement and uh, you thought you'd be able to take it further? Yes, yeah it was basically, uh, I knew what a great place it is and some places just have atmosphere and this place has atmosphere and it has feeling and I grew up on stories of you know the pancake kitchen and what happened there and I even worked here before my parents actually bought it you know it was one wow. of my first jobs as a waitress and uh, so it just meant a lot to me and I knew that the place could be better and my mum and dad were getting to retirement age and I just felt like I could take it to the next level. And I, I think you've done that as well because uh, I've come here for a couple of times and your hiring skills, the staff are full of energy, they're bubbly, their personality, is that obviously what you look for to keep up the customer service that you've uh, maintained? Well we try, we really try, I mean um, we, we like people to leave happy. You know, regardless of what's happened to them outside, let them have something nice to eat and just leave happy. Now, one thing I like about this place is it's open 24-7, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, it was one of the first places to open their doors for food for 24-7, and people thought you were absolutely crazy for doing so. Mm -hmm. Well, it was um, 
uh, back when we started, they thought that we were crazy for just opening up a pancake kitchen that just sold pancakes. And then when it actually came to opening 24 hours a day, the, the whole idea of that was basically the night shift, which was meant to finish at 12 o'clock, um, they weren't leaving until 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. And then the day shift that was meant to start at 8 o'clock, um, they would actually have to get here at 6 o'clock in the morning to open the place up. So someone came up with the idea of why not bring someone in between midnight and 8 o'clock in the morning, they can do all the clean up, and if we sell a pancake or two, great, fantastic. Well, it's taken on uh, its own thing, and um, it's absolutely huge that night nighttime trade. You know, hairdresser has all the stories, and you know, mm -hmm. uh, people at the bar and all that. You'd have some amazing stories here, things like a love story or anything like that, where someone might have met here and went well, on to love. Well, we've got one of one of the love stories is that this um, this lady. She was well when she was sixteen. She was absolutely in love, just like a sixteen-year-old can be. And her boyfriend brought her here on their first date. So it was very special for her. A little while later, the boyfriend moved away with his parents. And she got over him eventually and met someone else and she got married. And unfortunately, the wedding didn't Wasn't work out. Good. And so she was in the city one day and she had to sign her divorce papers oh. and she was very, very depressed. So she came into the pancake kitchen because it was good memories for her. And she's sitting there in the front room and this gentleman walks through the front door. It was her boyfriend from when she was 16, 16 years old mm -hmm. and they sat down and they had a good chin wag and within six months they were married and when wow. I saw her she had a little daughter with her and that was their their daughter and do they still pop in now and again yes. and say hello oh yes. that's absolutely amazing they do. so what is the secret ingredient to make them nice and fluffy because when I make them at home they look like crepes really flat rubbish and uh, I'd love to be able to make my boy some perfect pancakes what is the secret well, it's the ingredients. It really is down to the ingredients, good ingredients. Um, for one thing, your milk has to be very high in protein, so it reacts with the yeast to give you um, a, a big fluffy pancake, as well as temperature. Can't be too hot, can't be too cold when you're actually making your batter. And the rest of it's your, your buttermilk um, that actually goes into it. It's good quality flour, so it's good ingredients that goes with it. But temperature and good ingredients is a, a key factor. Well, I think I had the pancake making process down pat, so let's see how my flipping skills go. Now the perfect time to flip the pancake is when the holes start to develop and uh, aerate up to the top and then uh, so it's nice and brown on the bottom. We're not uh, nearly quite there yet, are we Carol? Nearly? These two are alright? So just like that? Oh, look at that! Right under! Two! Three, beautiful. I might get a job doing this. Oh, look at that. Oh, not those, it's a little bit cold down the side there. Oh, making me hungry. Put them onto your hand. So look at the bottom, that's not quite ready. Quite ready. That's beautiful. That's nice. So put that on there. On that one. Use your hand on. So you actually put it halfway on and then pull it with your fingers. Ah, oh, beautiful. Like that? No, don't push it. Beautiful. Are you upside down there? Oh, that's not too bad. Let me do it. There we go, 10 beautiful pancakes, absolutely amazing. So tell me Jay, how was the pancake? I don't think I could fit any more in this uh, manly figure of mine, am I clear? <laughs> You're right. I am excited though because we're about to interview Limbo. And their tips will be one of the most exciting performances in the garden this year. Shall we do it?
Here with the uh, limbo act for the fringe. I'm very excited. Look at these fine, hunky people here <laughs> with us. So how did the group come together then? If some of you from the States and and we've got someone from Sydney? Well, I per played, performed at the Melbourne Festival a few months back and I didn't realize it, but the uh, director, Scott, it was sort of an audition, non-audition. We had worked together here at the Adelaide Fringe and the Adelaide Festival with Daredevil Opera Company about 10 years ago. He creates shows that are based on music first, so I performed a solo show in Melbourne and then he asked me to be music director and composer for this show. Fantastic. And then he asked, who do you like in New York? And the first two people I suggested were Jonathan Nosen and Claire Holiday. There you go. Now, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, Fringe Act? And uh, Yeah, it's kind of beyond fantastic. I've been doing this for almost 20 years. And, and what Scott has curated in humans is just kind of beyond talent-wise, people that are that have, that have supreme skills, but also supreme physical theater and acting and working together skills. And bringing together five people from disparate places and three musicians from disparate places and, bring, and making a whole other world. And it's really an otherworldly experience. You really just like suck the audience into this place that, that they have no expletive idea of where they are. And spit them out 75 minutes later, you know, really gone through like nightmares of Well, some people may recognise Hilton's face. Obviously, you were in a reality dance show in Australia, yeah. so obviously your background's dance. Yeah. Tell us how um, you came to audition to this, for the show. Well, um, it was funny. Um, Scott met my brother in, uh, in Melbourne. Uh, my brother suggested me to be a part of this, this project and um, came down to Sydney, met me, I showed him some videos. And he was like, yep, you're in. And I was like, sweet. <laughs> now you can see uh, the gun show happening here. Jen, do you right. like it? I don't know who's got the bigger guns yeah. here. Well, well I think you. you oh, yeah. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and how are you liking Adelaide in terms of the weather? I mean, I'm sure you guys, it's pretty chilly back <laughs> in New York. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm not missing New York at all right now. We just had a horrible snowstorm, right. and I'm watching people like dig their cars out on Facebook and stuff, and I'm like, just me on the beach, no big deal. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm pretty much loving this. To me, it's heaven. This is like I died and went to heaven. This is my, this is, I'm totally content in this environment. Well, look, we're so lucky to have you here, and if you do get the opportunity as well, make sure you check around Adelaide, because it is a beautiful place. I love my rosy child She's got the way to make me happy You and me, we go in style Cracklin' Rose, you're a stop-off woman You make me sing like a guitar humming Hang on to me, girl, that song keeps running on Play it now, play it now, play it now My baby, Cracklin' Rose, you make me smile Got it for lots for an hour, that's all right. We've got all night to set the world right. Find us a dream and don't ask no questions, yeah. I'm here with the girls from Oz Cabaret. Welcome to Adelaide, girls. Thank you very much. Now, you're an Australian company, but you're based in Europe, aren't you? So tell yes. us about, about how you ended up in Europe. Uh, we all sort of went over for different reasons, singly, and then um, just over a year ago we all ended up in, in Holland. The girls came over to visit me to go to a festival called Carnival over wow. there, where everybody gets dressed up in crazy costumes and it's this big street-wide drinking festival. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so they came over to visit for that and we got to talking and, and that's when the idea was born. Now, let's talk about the idea because it's cabaret with a twist though, isn't it? Yes, cabaret with wine tasting. And how on earth did you come up with that? I'm so glad you did. <laughs> <laughs> We're just combining our great loves with really, music and wine. And yeah. what we do is we pair uh, wine characteristics with song characteristics. So we pair them that way. So I'm sure it would have been a very fun brainstorming session on the ins and outs of yeah. the actual yeah. show. Yeah, <laughs> around 4 a.m. on the carpet. It was nice. <laughs> and how did you all get into cabaret? Uh, we all met at university together, so we, um, Katrina and I studied a Bachelor of Musical Theatre at Central Queensland Conservatorium and Sarah studied Classical Piano. Yeah. Fantastic. That was back in uh, 2007. Yeah, 2007. That we yeah. met, yeah, and then, um, yeah, it's all happened from there, yeah. I guess.
I've had a glorious day here, Jen, but it is that time of the day where we have to get out of here. But I am like a kid in a candy store you here. You sure are. Don't forget to check your Fringe website for updates on all the shows you want to see. Now, this is a great opportunity, Jen, for photo opportunity of the week. Get on your elephant. Ooh.